myself, Dr. Kamini Mittal. I'm guest faculty at Center for Technology, Allahabad University. I'm presenting before you module five of paper eight, which is the paper of women in health, which comes under the women's studies. The title of the module is Declining Sex Ratio and Sex Determination. This is part one of the module and it deals with sex ratios and their interpretation. This has been authored by Dr. B. Subhasri from Rural, Rural Women's Social and Education Center, Kanchipuram, Tamil Nadu and Ms. Bhuvaneshwari Sunil who is a PhD scholar at Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. The outline of the module is such that it deals with imbalance in sex ratio and the technological developments, understanding the sex ratio indicators. It then gives a brief overview of India's sex ratio deals again with alternative perspectives in exploring sex ratio, the factors influencing demand for sex determination and then finally it indicates that we should move beyond sex ratio as a universal indicator. Since 1980s the act of sex determination followed by sex selective abortions are on the rise. Amniocentesis primarily intended to diagnose sex linked disorders was misused for sex determination to avoid the birth of girls. Sex selective abortions in the 20th century showed a strong son preference and daughter neglect. The imbalance in the sex ratios called for interpreting the sex ratios at birth, SRB, the closest indicator for examining the sex determination followed by sex selective abortions. SRB also indicates prevailing equity between males and females in a society at a given point of time. The generally accepted norm for SRBs is between 104 and 107 males per 100 females, which amounts to 93 to 96 females per 100 males. Actually, the United Nations and India define the SRBs as different. For United Nations, SRB is defined as number of males per 100 females, whereas in Indian context it is number of females per 100 males. A disproportionately larger number of boys being born indicates a sex selective abortion. Actually in the human species the ratio between males and females at birth is slightly biased towards the male sex. The natural sex ratio at birth is often considered to be around 105. This means that at birth on an average there are 105 males born for every 100 females born. Nature provides that the number of newborn males slightly outnumber newborn females because as they grow up, men are at higher risk of dying than women. Not only due to sex differentials in natural death rate, but also due to higher risk from external causes, which can be accidents, injuries, violence, and war casualties. Thus finally, the sex ratio of total population is expected to equalize. As for the definition of various sex ratios, in India the sex ratio is defined as number of females per thousand males in any given population at a specific point of time. Then you have uh, an important ratio named sex ratio at birth 
and it is the closest indicator to explore sex determination and sex selective abortions. It is calculated by ratio of female live births per 1000 male live births. The normal uh, range of SRB is between 934 to 952 females per 1000 male live births. Other indicators to understand the sex imbalance in a specific population are population sex ratio and child sex ratio. Population sex ratio refers to the ratio of females per 1000 males in the entire population and child sex ratio is the ratio of females per 1000 males in the age group of 0 to 6 years. If we consider the sex ratio in India, we find that it has been documented since the 19th century, the decennial census and the child sex ratio has declined from 1991 to 2001 from 945 to 914 whereas the overall sex ratio has seen an improvement from 927 to 940 between these 20 years. There were 49 districts in the country where for every 1000 male 0 to 6 year age children there were less than 850 female children and majority or 38 of these districts were located in just three northern and western states of Punjab, Haryana and Gujarat. Actually there is one more problem that not all births in the country are registered and so resort is taking to uh, consider the decennial census. So, these are the reliable figures. Analyzing child sex ratio, an alternative perspective. Sex selective abortions that follow sex determination is generally attributed as the main reason for imbalance in the sex ratios. Important pretext while analyzing the sex ratio as an indicator of sex determination. If we consider them, firstly more girls are dying than boys in India since the under 5 mortality is higher in rural and urban areas. A decline in female to male ratio at birth was seen even before the advent of any of these technologies. The demographic transition has led to many changes which have the influence of increasing the male births. The reasons are improved health care, therefore less of biologically uh, less male fetal loss. With the poor contraception use and less spacing of births and biologically more chances of male births associated to shorter intervals are likely to influence higher proportion of male births. Then the chances of male births are proven to be higher when a natural family planning method to have intercourse in the less fertile periods of the menstrual cycle, the chances of higher proportion of male birth is possible. Now to understand the question of that why is sex determination demanded, we can list a number of reasons. Sun preference is one of the reason and why is sun preference existent because of a old age security, adequate substitution of farm labor, continuity of family lineage and very important of all these is death rights awarded to sons. The sun preference linked with deep internalization of patriarchal values among women that are linked to their sense of security. Women feel safe and they feel that the importance of in the family is has improved with the birth of sons. Happiness and social status in the uh, women's conjugal homes is determined on producing sons. 
Unfortunately, girls are seen as an investment with very little returns. They are considered to be economic burden because of the dowry. All these social values and customs make girl child less valued, less preferred. It is an unpleasant reality for the women who go for SSA, that is sex selective abortions. There are multiple pressures on the woman and the compulsions on many who practice it. We can move beyond considering sex ratio as an indicator. Phenomena of sex determination and sex selective abortion operate at multiple level. Female subordination and oppression of women can be seen in all ages, in all classes, in all castes. This implies that analyzing the sex ratios independently as a universal indicator may not enable to understand the true situation. There is a need to address the social discrimination of girls compared to boys during infancy and also during the first four years of life. The lower status of girls, especially in situation of poverty, that reflects discriminatory nutritional and health practices needs to be addressed. The morality of such an act of sex determination comes to the forefront of discussion, leading to ethical dilemmas in judgments. It is essential and important to understand and evaluate sex selective abortions under family and community practices that make it desirable and acceptable. There is need to recognize that patriarchal society, its oppressive institutions and practices are responsible for allowing the female fetuses to be aborted. There is need to address the underlying conditions that promote sex selective abortions and bias against girls. In the forthcoming module, we shall review the policies and programs that address the sex determination prevention measures. While decline in child sex ratio has been attributed plainly to the sex determination and sex selective abortion of female fetuses, other dimensions are also to be considered, such as more girls dying than boys demographic transition, decline in biologically male fetal loss due to miscarriage and others. Sex determination is mostly induced by sun preference in the patrilineal and patrilocality system and lack of value for girls as she is considered a burden on the family. Patrilineal is related to descent through male lines and patrilocality is the practice whereupon a married couple lives with or near the family of the husband. Further, the population stabilization programs that have created perfect two child norms as a right family size along with preferred sex of the child within a family induces sex determination. Since sex determination and sex selective abortion operate at multiple levels, the gender gaps at different age groups have to be identified. To understand the situation better than analyzing the sex ratios independently as a universal indicator. These dimensions of sex determination calls to address through national legislation banning the use of sex determination. There is further appeal to address the underlying conditions that promote sex selective abortions and bias against girls. Thank you.